Good afternoon everyone. Today we will be presenting you with our Desert Roads House Project Management Plan. The National Disability Insurance Scheme have selected our team to construct a Wollongong based housing development featuring 70 new dwellings based on UOW's award winning Desert Roads House concept. Our aim is to provide a solution to the undersupply of safe and affordable housing for the disabled community in our area. Utilising a risk matrix and hierarchy of controls, our team was able to deduce multiple risks associated with the design phase, the delivery and construction phase and the handover phase of our project. During the design phase, peer evaluations will occur to reduce the risk of errors occurring during construction. Peer evaluations normally occur on larger finance or long-term risks in a project. The project delivery and construction phase is easily the riskiest phase of any project with the largest cost for changes with the smallest time frame of completion. A focus on engineering controls, substitution and elimination hierarchy controls are necessary for this phase with an urgency for procurements of subcontractors and construction materials, along with the stakeholder environmental management plans. Finally, our team were hoping to manage the risks during the handover by recording and documenting all testings and defects, gaining approvals for final building operations and commissioning of project deliverables. We now move on to the scheduling breakdown. Accurate estimation of project scheduling is essential to carrying out a successful project. To do this, a work breakdown structure was used to get the key tasks and relevant subtasks for the project at each stage. Uh, this was further broken down into more accurate tasks with task duration, start and finish date, and predecessor tasks analyzed. Uh, this was done in the Project Libre software and allowed for a Gantt chart to be produced showing the critical path. A uh, scheduling risk analysis was performed, which is necessary in order to account for and mitigate possible scheduling delays and errors. Uh, these delays can come from days lost due to poor weather, unavailable staff, uh, material and equipment delays and other factors. So 10 days was added uh, on the Project Libre software throughout the project as non-work days to account for this. Uh, up next, the costing analysis will be explained. Estimate cost and costing of this project consisted of activities from reconstruction phase to handover phase and also the liability period for defects and immediate maintenance. The main cost breakdown components were estimated and listed in the table shown in this slide. All subcost and subcosting were strictly followed the Cordial Commercial Building Cost Guide 2020. As such, an inflation rate of 2.02% and a location cost factor of 1.006 were applied to estimate the grand total of nearly 30 million Australian dollars for the whole project. A contingency of 10% was applied to both profit and overhead to accommodate the unexpected events that potentially delayed the project time frame. Next, we'll talk about the work health and safety of our plan. The city of Wollongong is a highly urbanised area that is surrounded with a complex marine ecosystem to its east and a national park declared escarpment to its west. Therefore, a key deliverable in this report is to evaluate the work health and safety issues as well as the environmental concerns arising due to the construction of the project. Our team utilised a four-phase assessment criteria to rigorously consider all aspects of project operations. The first step was to identify the safety or environmental hazard, such as a fire or a clearance of native vegetation. The second step was to then explore all the possible induced risks and flow-on effects this would have, both short and long-term. We then evaluated the most efficient method of control to reduce these associated risks. Finally, we assign this responsibility to the respective worker on site to closely monitor each hazard. We can now transition into the next deliverable of the management plan, site management. The site management plan has a lot of factors involved to be accurate and inclusive. Although the plan will update and change with the project conditions, it is important to have an in-depth understanding before commencing each phase. Stakeholder management plan focuses on the important influences all types of stakeholders have on the project. Our team's plan is to keep communication open to all stakeholders, whether it's formal or informal lines of communication. For the environmental management plan, our team is focused on what we can do to minimise some impacts. For noise, we have reduced hours on Saturdays and no works on Sundays to be considerate for our neighbours. And for dust, we will utilise a water cart on site. 
For the construction, work health and safety, our team has implemented safety precautions in line with Safe Work Australia's safety strategy for 2002 to 2022. Workers must be trained in work health and safety, SWIMS documents need to be re recorded during construction, and PPE must be worn at all times. Further, safety inductions will be required for all persons, including visitors. We will now move on to our team's monitoring and control plans. Thanks, Ella. Monitoring and control is used through the entire project lifecycle. They are required to track, review and regulate the performance and progress of the project. Through clear, well-communicated formal management control, project planning and involvement can prevent many construction issues. Monitoring and control plans can identify potential risks and is issues by detecting deviations from the project and how they can be addressed with the correct deviations. KPIs are the project and contract performance objectives selected to measure timeframes and to assess planned progress with actual progress. This allows immediate, immediate comparison and alerts to the project manager to easily view if the project is deviating to resolve the issue. The project team also proposes to use multiple diverse types of monitoring to track and manage the project delivery located in the middle. Finally, all phases of the project will be monitored using the quality control methods located on the right. For more information on the monitoring control plan can be found within the report. Finally, back to Ollie for the final stage and the handover. Upon completion of the Desert Rose housing, the UOW project management team are to ensure that the NDIS is satisfied with all aspects of the operations. The process begins with the contract completion, which involves the handling over of maintenance manuals and relevant staff training to ensure smooth long-term operations. Then, the commissioning takes place, where subsystems are integrated together and tested to ensure all project requirements are met. It's at this point that the issues can be resolved such as miscommunication of detailing. An example of this might be a disability arm railing placed in the wrong location. Operational readiness is a confirmation phase ensuring that all future maintenance procedures are adequate. This could include plumbing and electrical systems. Finally, the project handover takes place and NDIS signs off. The closure can now commence, where the project management team identify lessons learned and ensure a positive relationship is maintained with NDIS for future projects. So judging from our project management tools and the methods we've used to analyse the various project requirements, our team is confident that we are able to reliably deliver the Desert Rose House project to the client. Uh, thank you for listening.